Hey, here's the big question of the day. Can you hide yourself from the grid with a burner phone? Coming up. Burner phones are cheap phones you can buy at a store. They're typically in the $25 to $50 range and are usually used with prepaid plans. Not always, but usually. Many burner phones are limited to prepaid plans. The idea of a burner phone is that they're thrown away after some short period of use, like a week or a month. So in theory, you burn the phone after use. That's where the term came from. This is intended so phone numbers are used only for short periods of time. So if you want to hide, in theory, this would be an answer. Many people think this is such a great idea to keep yourself off the grid. The problem is, depending on who you're hiding from, you may have no idea of the technology used to find you. And you think this will keep you safe, but not necessarily. So I will try to explain the related tech involved. If you're in some country where you're being tracked by a hostile government, where you have little rights, or maybe you're a journalist trying to obscure a source, or a whistleblower that is staying on the down low, or you could just be some famous person looking for privacy. For people like these, it is a legitimate goal to hide your location. It is incorrect for people to assume that burner phones are intended for criminals and drug lords. But unfortunately, the mere choice of having a cell phone will typically reveal your location immediately. We've created a monster with these devices. There was a case in Syria where a journalist by the name of Maria Colvin was communicating with her news organization about some new atrocities and her location was discovered via her phone. And shortly after calling her office, her spot in the building was blown up by an RPG. Well, she died. Was this because of the phone or just luck? Too precise. So these are moments where mistakes cannot be made. Revealing your location can result in life or death risks. In my opinion, burner phones have very limited use and only for super security. I'll give you the proper use instructions at the end of the video. Let's talk about what phones to get first. Typically, you bring your own SIM card, so in addition to the phone, you'll have to go get a SIM card from a compatible carrier and sign up to some sort of plan. You either do a prepaid or just do a subscription month to month. A lot of these burner phones are locked to a carrier, so be aware when you purchase them. They can also be locked into a prepaid plan like AT&T Go. In the U.S., Assuming the phones are sold unlocked and they have SIM cards, then they will be compatible with T-Mobile and AT&T, which are the GSM carriers. If they don't come with SIM cards, they're typically for Verizon and Sprint, which are the CDMA carriers. Most carriers around the world are GSM type carriers. Now each of these carriers will have resellers, so reseller companies may be where you get your SIM card. But phones made for the U.S. may not support the frequency in other countries, so this is something to check in advance for each phone if you're going to be traveling. If a phone you purchase is locked to a carrier, you will not be able to change carrier. Most of these cheap phones are fixed to a carrier and to a plan. Many of these phones are cheap Android smartphones. It's actually hard to find stock of dumb phones even when they're burner phones. I didn't find dumb phones in stock at Best Buy, but I actually found them on Amazon. I'll put some info in the description of the video for links on these devices. Anyway, speaking of Androids, let's talk about problems with burner phones. Number one. Problem number one is if you buy an Android burner phone, you will be tracked anyway because all phones running Android have Wi-Fi. It's a guarantee that we'll have Wi-Fi. So you will be subject to Wi-Fi triangulation. Google will be able to know your location exactly 
within six feet. Any website you access from the phone may get your location if you use the internet on the phone. Number two, using techniques used by MZ catchers and Stingray, now these are government devices for hacking your phone, you can be pinged by silent calls, silent texts, and your phone will identify itself with the phone's identifier called the MZ, I-M-S-I. This is like the username of the phone. Once the MZ is captured, you can be spotted by pre-placed MZ catchers, which will report your current location. These are little computers that can sense cell phones. This can even be done by aircraft. They can pinpoint your location from the sky based on your MC. A plane can fly around the sail area and your phone can be sent a query and it will respond back, thus revealing itself. This technique was invented by the NSA and is now in regular use at the FBI. Foreign governments can also make their own version of MZ catchers to do the same thing. Number three, all phones can be roughly tracked by cell tower, which is usually not precise enough, but some phones when queried on LTE will actually report a GPS position. This is not true of all brands, but it is something to think about. If the party tracking you knows the brand of your phone, then they will know this technique if this technique is usable. This is without trying to fence you in with MC catchers nearby. This can be done by silent calls, silent texts, or silent notifications, which your phone will gladly respond to. Number four, you can easily be identified based on who you call. When you get a new phone, it will likely be used to call the same people. So unless parties are on burner phones as well, then you will be easily identified just from this pattern. So think about it. If you get a burner phone and then call your wife regularly, it will match a pattern of phone calls with your normal device, an easy match. Number five. You could already be added to some watch list just by buying a burner phone. Since a lot of criminals buy these phones and not just the privacy minded, I'm going to assume that some will track these buyers in some way, even if you pay in cash. So I'm thinking surveillance cameras or some sort of paper trail that would be generated. However, there's a time proximity issue here. If you buy the burner phones way in advance of when they will be used, then it can obscure the buyer. So stock up. Remember to stock up on the SIM cards as well. Number five, if you're hiding from the NSA, then stop now. They have voice print tracking capabilities. They already have a voice print of probably anyone who's ever spoken on the phone. Snowden revealed this. Once your voice is heard on the networks, your voice print will identify you on your phone. This may not be a capability available to anyone else but the NSA, so this may not matter to you if you're not concerned about the NSA. But, according to Snowden, voice printing is very precise and they can identify you by hearing your voice anywhere in the world via electronic means. Number six, all phones have two identifiers. First is the MC, which is your username. It's kept on a SIM card and it's, and it's attached to the SIM card and the carrier plan. Then there's the IMEI number, which is tied to the physical device. So if you keep a burner phone but replace the SIM card, the IMEI will still be known. So simply changing SIM cards will not stop the carrier from tracking you. So it's really useless when used with different SIM cards. So let's summarize. In the end, it's all about who the opposition is. Can Google locations from your burner phone be accessed? Yes, law enforcement can easily subpoena that information, 
but only in the U.S. There are many cases in the press where the FBI has gotten lists of people found at specific locations. Can apps and websites used with your burner phone track your location? If you use the internet on the phone, yes, if you're not thinking. This is a major risk since it can be done by anyone that can lure you into visiting a website or an app. Now, the Facebook app definitely tracks your every move, same with advertising aggregators. And some of this can ignore your location preferences. How about voice print? Only the highest levels of intelligence agencies can track you by voice print. So this is not a likely threat from smaller countries. But each country could go to the local phone company and force them to reveal your locations, which they can easily do using the same techniques used by the MC catchers. It's an interesting problem, but the answer is pretty clear. Here's the only safe use scenario for a burner phone. One, you must buy a phone with no Wi-Fi and no Android. In other words, a dumb phone. Two, you must keep all burner phones off until right before use. Three, you can only use a burner phone once and then you can throw it away after. Number four, you can only call someone that is also on a burner phone and only once for both. And the phone call has to be brief. Number five, you must not use the internet on the Wi-Fi or phone. If you didn't get an Android, there will be typically be no internet. With no Wi-Fi, there will be no Wi-Fi triangulation. Without internet, there will be no location tracking by apps and websites. Here's my summary. I don't use burner phones. In the interest of privacy, it's probably overkill. For internet privacy, I'm usually just concerned about data aggregators that sell my data like locations. That is not a use case for burners. I just use my dumb phone that doesn't track my location. Then I replace my SIM card as needed for different phone numbers. I don't actually call on the phone and mostly I use it for setting up Google Voice. I know my carrier knows my IMEI number, the device ID, but it's not something they will necessarily share, so I think that it, will, it won't matter to me. Changing a SIM card will change the MC off the phone, so a new attempt will have to be made to learn your phone number for tracking an MC. But if you still have a use case based on what I said, like journalists and people not wanting to be tracked by hostile government, then look at the burner phones I recommend on the description section of the video. Generally, I would prefer phones that use SIM cards and make sure they are dumb phones. Also to remind you, in order not to be obvious about a burner phone purchase, stock up on them ahead of time, way before you have reason to use them. But wait, if you're really intent on hiding, then I would follow Snowden's example, dump the phone. There are other encrypted methods to talk on the internet, such as encrypted apps like Brax.me and Tor. As always, if you like my content, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell.